Randy. Well, first of all, 2009, something new, something different. Well, S6S? Well, it's actually S6LS. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, certified December 23rd uh, under Light Sports Special. How do you see the market for the 6S, uh, 6LS to be different from the 7 Series outside of the obvious side-by-side -side versus tandem? It's a stronger market uh, just because of the physical nature of the aircraft being side-by-side, -side, more social animal. And you got the tricycle gear option, which helps a lot. Other than that, it's uh, going to be a real strong contender for us. We actually didn't want to bring it out because it's such a, a good product for us all these years as a kit aircraft. And we had actually brought this plane out as a primary category certification candidate. And then we switched in the middle of it over to the uh, 7 because we were worried that people would stop buying the kits waiting for the uh, finished airplane to happen. The S6 LS, the base version, how are you equipping that, powering it, and so forth? The LS uh, version of the 6 is uh, coming with a transponder, a radio, a 296, and an intercom and day VFR instruments. And uh, that, that, I think, is pretty much all the panel you need, unless you're like us, where you have to fly somewhere to air shows halfway across the country. You need updated weather and things. Then you, in the same pocket, you can put the 396 with the XM. So. Engine selections? Just one engine, uh, 912S, the 100 horse, uh, across the board. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. The industry has quite a lot to offer, probably way too much to offer, too many manufacturers, too many models to sustain where the market is for the moment. How do you see RANDs fitting into all this? And if you would, kind of rank RANDs in, in, the, in terms of staying power and its ability to meet the market demand. Well, that's, that's a hard question to, to answer. You know, you know, we've been at it for, well, the business has been there for 36 years, starting with bicycles uh, back in 73, and then now an 83 aircraft started, so 26 years. I can't see how we'll go away if we keep doing what we've been doing. I mean, sometimes in business you don't know exactly what your formula is, so you don't change a lot at any given moment, so you don't lose the formula that you do have. Uh, so I predict that we'll be around. Uh, we definitely got the orders right now to substantiate that claim. And as far as any industry, even if you want to call the light sport plane an industry, there can't be a lot of players. It's going to it's going to weed out to uh, maybe the, the the final dozen, maybe the final five even, and that's actually good for the consumer because then the pie will be big enough for those manufacturers to build good products with substantial improvements over time. Otherwise, you're going to have this a lot of orphaned aircraft. You know, one of the things I want to point out is a lot of our customers want lower cost airplanes and. And I say you should be very optimistic about that happening because there's going to be many orphaned aircraft up for sale for very low prices. Of course, the hitch is, is how are you going to get parts, how are you going to work on it. But you may be able to find these airplanes pretty reasonably, reasonably priced. Well, we've got an industry that's increasingly crowded with LSAs that are pushing the 150000 mark. Are you finding the 6 and the 7 uh, appealing more to a bargain flyer or just simply because of the merits of the airplane? I think price isn't so much the, the issue for uh, most LSA shoppers. If it is, they're shopping for a kit. So no, I don't, I don't think that's the issue. They're looking for what the airplane does, more or less, than the price. Obviously, uh, that is more or less the mentality of the manufacturer, that if it's a simpler plane, a simpler price, or a lower price, and as it should be. I mean, it should be less involved. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. 
between the 7, the 19, and the 6, you've got quite a lineup uh, for the experimental slash LSA market. How are each of these uh, turning out for you from the standpoint of how are they selling, who are you selling them to, and where do you see their futures? Well, those airplanes are all kind of individuals. Performance-wise, the 7 and the 6 are really close, but they do attract two different crowds. Uh, the 7 crowd's a uh, very dedicated tail dragger crowd, obviously, because it's only a tail dragger. The 6 can go both ways. You know, there's kind of a macho thing with tail draggers, so once they learn it's okay to have the uh, 6 as a trike, they're, they're okay with that as well. The 19's a different category altogether. That pilot is coming from, I think, the uh, heavy arm GA crowd whereas the 7 and 6 crowd is more uh, ultralight routes, uh, bush plane routes, that kind of crowd from that. Two final questions. What's right with the LSA industry right now and what's wrong with it? I think what's wrong with the business, it's too easy to get too many foreign aircraft imported into the country. There needs to be a little bit better regulation to see if these planes really are in compliance. Uh, what's right about it is that it is a good system if you play by the rules. And if you uh, do it, it's, it's a great privilege that the FAA or our government has given us to allow manufacturers like us who uh, have dreamed about building certified aircraft to actually access and build certified aircraft all on the contingency that uh, we believe your compliance is, is good. And, and that's a very good privilege, and I hope people respect and honor that and do their homework and, and make these airplanes correct. Well, Randy, once again, congratulations on your many successes, and uh, same time next year? You betcha. You bet.